Yeah, this is the second session from the end of this summit. Uh, thank you for thank you all for being here, and I appreciate your time and attention. Uh, today, I'll be talking about from SBOM to call graphs, uh, harnessing o OSS tools to streamline change impact analysis in cloud services. Oh, that's okay. Uh, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Noboru Iwamatsu, and I have been working for Fujitsu for over 20 years. Uh, I started as a researcher, uh, then moved on to the uh, to lead of our cloud services, and currently I'm focused uh, on from uh, promoting innovative cloud service update method. Yeah, today I'll share. Uh, here's agenda of this talk. Uh, the top two topics, uh, supply chain attack and uh, S-bomb. Uh, I believe you already knew, uh, know about it and uh, or already learned a lot about uh, this summit. So I will briefly explain here. And about the main topic, update change impact analysis, uh, I will explain the details and uh, share the results. So let's get started. So software supply chain attack is an increasingly common type of cyber attack. Uh, it's not a direct attack, but it injects malicious code into the third party library, uh, compromising the integrity and the security of the final products. Uh, the reason this risk is on rise is uh, modern software uh, that we are developing is heavily relies on numerous third-party components. Uh, third-party in this component means open source. So the extensive use of open source means that the vulnerabilities or malicious code in open source can lead to widespread and severe impact on our society. An SBOM, or a software bill of, of materials, is a comprehensive list of all components in software products. Uh, it is considered a key defense, oh, sorry, mm. uh, key defense against supply chain attacks. Uh, this importance is mentioned in here, linked here, executive order by President Biden, uh, linked here. About SBOM's benefit, it enhances the transparency by clarifying software parts, origins, and their licenses. Uh, it detects vulnerabilities by scanning each component for risk and it helps a uh, uh, prompt response with fast identification and fixable security problem uh, in components. Yeah, here are some of the, uh, the open source SOM tools and the solutions, uh, especially that have cute icons. Uh, they are increasingly becoming available both, uh, this kind of tool available in both open source and commercial. Uh, this is an example of using SOM tools. Uh, integrating SBOM tools into DevOps process is essential for clear software component tracking and risk management. In the deliver phase uh, here, uh, where the software is packaged and uh, prepared for the release, the SBOM is generated and registered into SBOM database. By scanning the SBOM database in response to the provided vulnerability information, uh, security risk can be detected. If any risks are found, the incident management system immediately alerts the developer. So a developer to initiate the remediation process. So thanks to the SBOM, so Fire SBOM to automate these all processes, uh, turn around faster and faster, but uh, mm, actually the uh, actual remediation efforts of the developers are escalating. So developers must now address an increasing volume of complex security risk. In the rush of update, uh, we easily tend to fall back on the ad hoc and the problematic approach uh, described in the top side. Uh, we briefly skim release note 
just read this note, and it may lead us to miss some important changes. And also, blind retrusting package manager is dangerous. Uh, moreover, we always uh, overestimate our test coverage, but actually not. Uh, so which can result in unchecked release. To address these issues, we propose uh, introduce an update change impact analysis here. Uh, this approach enables us to uh, evaluate all impacting changes and the dependencies in advance. As a result, then we can expedite our update decision and uh, enhance reliability and uh, Variability of our development and uh, uh, testing phase. So, uh, I'll explain about the uh, update change impact analysis. The basic idea of this update change impact analysis comes from this study. Uh, can we trust uh, test to automate dependency updates? A case study of JavaScript uh, this issued in 2022 and its implementation, Upu Datira, yeah. Uh, it seems to be a Swedish word, of, word for update. Uh, if you Google Upu Datira, probably you can hit the IKEA furniture translator. And uh, talk about our objectives. That study uh, calculated the test coverage for direct and indirect dependencies for uh, more than 500 uh, projects and it claims test coverage and its ability to detect the defects I is insufficient in most of the projects. And the static analysis uh, proves to be approximately twice as effective than test. And uh, the its implementation update does uh, analyze semant uh, semantic code changes and the code graph to identify the impacting changes. So inspired by this work, uh, we have developed our own version of update change impact analysis system, uh, leveraging all these open source tools to evaluate our in-house cloud applications uh, implemented in Node.js. So here shows our architecture. Mm, our prototype is implemented into Python script and with Jenkins pipeline. It consists of five stages uh, update simulation, semantic change detection, code graph construction, uh, reliability analysis, and change history mapping. In the first stage, uh, update simulation stage, we set up a pre-update and pre-update environment and a post-update environment. Here shows the setup instructions of pre and post-update uh, post environment. Both environments are required to build from application source code. We, uh, first we launch Node.js in, uh, Node uh, uh, in Docker container, then obtain the application source code, then set up the, reproduce the exact dependencies uh, described in the package log JSON, including the ap uh, application repository. Uh, we use npm CI command here, then perform update. In the second stage, we extract the semantic changes between pre and post update. Mm, here shows how to find only the difference in the program code. To identify the package version difference, uh, we analyze the package dependencies and, uh, and then compare the versions of the same package, uh, like this, same package, and uh, we, uh, we identify the package version from package it's in, uh, included in the package JSON file. In if we detect the updates, this updates, next we find the modified program files. Uh, it's essential for in this step to exclude document function files like license or any markdown or kind of so. Uh, it's and the two specify include only uh, JavaScript.js and JS files. Uh, during this inclusion, we unavoidably retain test and sample code uh, due to their fact that they're same, uh, 
same time frame. Mm. Um, you can't imagine, but the uh, um, pa package code contains uh, a lot of tests and sample code. I think they are nece uh, necessary, but uh, actually they are included. So finally, we use diff command to check uh, the difference. After identifying the difference in the, uh, in the program call, we use gum tree to extract functions uh, that have semantically changed. Gum tree is a syntax of a diff tools based on abstract syntax tree, AST. Uh, and it also has academic origin uh, in here. Uh, we trace, uh, sorry, um, gum tree passes source code to into AST expression like this. Then identify the locate and they find the and the locate the difference like this. Uh, some component are deleted or added or created or kind of that. Uh, different ST and look at difference in the ST level. So we trace uh, these location information to specific line number of functions, then compile them into the list of uh, changed functions. Uh, here is an example of diff output and uh, gum tree output. You can see uh, the difference in the comment, uh, commented section, or documented, or s s just a style changes. Uh, they are ignored, and uh, semantically, uh, semantical, semantic change, uh, only semantic change was uh, identified uh, gum tree by the gum tree. In the third stage, we construct the call graphs. So to do this, we use Jelly. Uh, Jelly is uh, a static analyzer for constructing call graph for JavaScript and TypeScript on Node.js platform. It is based on, on these below academic studies. Uh, Jelly is a bit uh, tricky too, so <laughs> To prevent out of uh, memory errors, we create multiple call graphs by splitting the dependent package to be loaded. First time, we ignore dependencies to create baseline call graph. Then after the second loop, we load each dependent package and we merge them later. Here's an example of Jelly's HTML output. Uh, th like this, mm, if you zoom on the center part, you will see this kind of this. Mm. The rectangles represent uh, packages and modules, and the circles represent functions. And the arrows, yeah, arrows and lines uh, represent package dependency and function calls. We use this. The call graph data uh, in included in the HTML output is like this. Mm. Uh, there are JSON elements, uh, so many elements. Uh, that represent packages, modules, functions, and calls. Mm, and we use them as a nodes and edge in a graph theory term. Mm. So the next stage is reachability analysis. Uh, we use network X here. Uh, network X is a famous Python library for manipulating complex networks. So we already have pre applied call graph and a post update call graph and the change function list here. So we load uh, their old JSON file and the old JSON into network X and uh, link change function to call graph like this. Uh, library A is updated and uh, 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 some function is deleted and uh, library D as a new function here and the library C updated a function and finally, analyze reachability of changed and uh, connected to the application mm. networks will then identify the impacting call graph between calls like this. The last stage is the change history mapping. Uh, this is our original uh, part, which wasn't mentioned in the previous studies. Uh, to begin with, we need to get the source code of each package. Uh, since the installed package don't come with this information, not having Git, uh, Git, Git information, so we use the npm command 
it's NPM view command to retrieve the repository details and then proceed to cloning. The next is selecting the correct tag that corresponds to our package version. Uh, this can be challenging uh, since the version number, like 1.2.3, is uh, uh, don't always match. Uh, don't match the tag name. For example, version 1.2.3 uh, is a version number, but uh, tag name is comes with start with B or dot uh, replace with underscores, a kind of this. Um, in case of a monorepo, uh, it's a kind of uh, consolidated uh, uh, multiple Git repositories in one repository style. And in case of this uh, monorepo, uh, the tag might include organization, uh, uh, organization prefix and package name underscore uh, underscore then have <laughs> a version number like this. So it's very challenging, uh, difficult. So we use uh, multiple similar uh, similarity algorithms such as anagram, guest out, and Rubenstein distance to identify the uh, most similar tag. So, but uh, unfortunately, some repository don't have uh, don't have tags, nor don't have the version information in the commit. Uh, I can't believe it. So, in this case, we give up. Uh, after su successfully retrieving the source scan and identifying the correct tag. The next step is to map the package module, module in this context is a file of the JavaScript, uh, to source file. Uh, in simple case, it's straightforward. Just replace the top directory uh, from package here to uh, clone the deal. So when dealing with package uh, modules that are bundled or transpiled or minified, uh, this means merged into multiple, multiple files into one file, or transcoded TypeScript to JavaScript, or uh, compressed by removing unnecessary uh, white space or line breaks or kind of so. And the map file uh, available uh, are, are, provi pro are provided in, this, uh, in, pro uh, in package here. Uh, we need to use source map decoder this to help us restore the original file's information includes source file's path. Uh, it's the last step. Uh, we use a git log with revision range and uh, hyphen L options to identify the commit uh, from function name. It's amazing function, uh, git uh, identify the function, function name, uh, the commit from function name. <laughs> but. Uh, if above common doesn't work, this common doesn't work, use line number ranges instead. So finally, we collect these changes information into run Excel file by open py Excel. Now, uh, let's look at the, our experimental result. So we conducted three distinct use cases to understand the impact of the package operate. The first is update one dependent package that has no dependent. This is a simple case. And the second case is update one dependent package, but that has a lot of dependent. The third case is, uh, mm, um, is most of the up update, update the most of the updated package at the same time. And the first target, the what I found package is Axios, uh, it's a popular HTTP client uh, for Node.js platform. It's a, not an application, it's a library. But uh, we updated its dependent package, uh, its following redirects uh, from 1.50.0 to 1.15.3 uh, from the minimum requirement of the Axios to the latest version. Uh, its following redirect is a uh, small and just a one file a package that has no dependent. Here is the actual uh, result. Mm, by updating the follow redirect from 1.15.0 to 1.53, uh, this result indicates that uh, five semantic function changes are detected in the following uh, follow redirects. And these five changes affect uh, 
646 and cold pass in Atlas. It's a large impact. So let's uh, track these five changes by change history mapping result. Uh, most of the changes were related to newly introduced function here, his buffer. Uh, this type of change appears uh, appear when uh, refactoring introduce a new fundamental level functions. Uh, the causes of the impact were consolidated into two commits. There are so many changes, but they are caused by, triggered by two, just uh, two commits. Mm. So uh, developers will be able to make an update decision after carefully reviewing these just uh, two commits here. This is the first result. Uh, let's move on to the next case. Uh, here's an Azure sample application, Node.js Docs, Hello World. Mm. We updated Express here uh, from 4.17.1 to 4.17.3. Mm. Dot one, but the 4.17.1 has actually has a vulnerable, uh, vulnerable dependent packages in it, and the uh, three, the last one, the 17.3 has resolved. So before looking at the result, a brief description is, is uh, expressed here. Uh, it's one of the most widely used uh, Node.js web application framework, and uh, it has uh, over 20 dependent packages. We said it's minimalist, but it's a quite a large package. Uh, here, uh, here is a hollow world result. After updating the Express from 4.17.1 to 4.73, uh, 543 semantic ch uh, function changes were detected. However, no impacting changes were found. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a small note, but uh, uh, of course that, uh, it's important. Uh, uh, we, we investigate post operating uh, environment and uh, it really has 76 packages and uh, uh, almost 200 modules, but actually in this application, the call gap, they are not so, uh, they're not so used. Uh, only about half of the file are used in the application. So mm, in this case, yeah, updating would not cause any problem or no, <laughs> no need to update, I think. So let's move on to the last case, uh, Azure SDK Westbrook. <laughs> it's another sample program from Azure. Uh, in the last case, I'm afraid <laughs> you don't aware it, but uh, here uh, it has a pretty old package lock JSON file here. So we used to uh, uh, we use this as a pre-updated um, uh, pre environment to build, and then update all outdated package at the time. Yeah, here shows the result. So yeah, in this case, more than 40,000 semantic ch uh, function changes were detected. And uh, post update environment, oh, sorry, uh, in case that uh, uh, just includes, uh, uh, post, up, uh, post update environment is, uh, really includes 55 packages, but the actually call graph use just 20 or so. Mm. But uh, call graph shows the code that actually the code is but pretty small, I think. So the reachable changes were 69, and uh, surprisingly they affected just 69 changes affect just one call pass. So we investigated the reason. Um, the appli the appli this application simply calls one function here. Uh, the public cutout function. Uh, it, it was a heart of here, uh, as less public cutouts uh, functions, core functions, and uh, and there's public catalog and uh, dependent package, uh, that dependent package here uh, were updated at the same time. So looks, uh, let's look into the change history mapping results. Uh, we found more than half change was due to the removal of one package 
open telemetry API, uh, one package open telemetry API, and uh, Azure core tracing uh, is a for remove full remover. So other causes, uh, one committee one four three two is narrowed down to uh, ten comments here. So it's very helpful helpful for developers that uh, on just only ten commits need to be reviewed despite such a uh, uh, large update changes. Uh, also, I'd like to mention that all changes file uh, change file list here is this index.js so yeah it's a, a trans file file so we also proved that uh, our source map decoder worked well in this case so let's summarize this my talk yeah yeah she has so she has shows key takeaways so pesbom or software build of materials management is crucial defensive measure against software supply chain attacks, but remember, as we alone uh, aren't enough to make software update easy. So, our update change impact analysis reveals the following insight. The package dependencies in Node.js applications are very complex and many of package and the source code, but uh, many of the packages and source code included are actually not used. By analyzing, analyzing the semantic changes in the source code and the code graphs, uh, only the changes that truly have an impact are identified. Furthermore, by associating these changes with Git log user histories, uh, only the key changes that should be focused on are pinpointed. So we believe UCIA uh, update change impact analysis with expedite uh, vulnerability response planning and accelerate development and clarify the scope of testing and verification. Uh, last but not least, uh, all these analyses can be achieved by using open source tools. So uh, thank you for all these developers and contributors. The last slide, uh, the future work. I talk about future work. Uh, we have a lot of work to a uh, lot of works to improvement our system. Uh, it's a one example, but optimization of changes to mapping is uh, important. Click and uh, uh, we, we use uh, many OS open source tools, but they have lot. Uh, we found some bug and uh, only fix some uh, tools. So we like to uh, feedback this uh, fix uh, to the com community. And now we are in development. Uh, uh, we are preparing the support of uh, Go language and the Java language. And uh, also we'd like to mm, add some dynamic analysis integration because we'd like to enhance runtime behavior analysis. Mm. Also, we are now migrating our UCI application from Jenkins to the application running in Kubernetes. And the last, uh, it's not yet determined, but uh, we'd like to uh, publish our result as an open source. And uh, that is, thank you for uh, listening. Do you have any questions? I, I guess it's partly a comment that you could actually use similar kind of analysis yeah. on from like distribution packages uh, to um, applications on top of them, um, a similar kind of mapping, um, mm. different tools, but yeah, similar mapping of concepts to core changes. So it's got a lot of broad applications, so well done, thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, this idea is uh, applicable for all, <laughs> so uh, all programs. I think uh, they basically, but uh, theoretically, it's yes. But uh, uh, the source code uh, we use the npm package in the uh, in this presentation. But 
yeah, RPM source package and uh, the build, uh, uh, creating, co yeah, of course, call graph by C tags or kind of like, uh, yeah. Uh, so it depends on the uh, lang uh, program language and it's a key, uh, our key component is a call graph constructor and uh, uh, gamma tree, a syntax tree based diff tool. Uh, it, they support your language. It's, uh, it's theoretically applicable, I think. Oh, thank you for your time.